So we are in uh, we're in Houston, and we've got our uh, production team, our uh, documentary Blaze TV documentary team, and of course I brought my good friend and uh, chief researcher and head writer for my television program, uh, Jason. In who Jason, tell me the story that we thought we were going to find, and we still may find. But tell me the story that you thought we were coming out for. So if you just based on the reporting that's happened so far, I was expecting basically almost what I saw in Iraq, right? Like UN tents type things, uh, crime going all over the place. Uh, the ultimate squalor that you can think of mixed in with crime visibly. Almost like it was like Grand Theft Auto, you know what I mean? But actually seeing it in real life play out. I got to tell you, when we first showed up, I do not, I can't fathom how that's the story that you get just by showing up, driving around and saying, okay, this is what's going on. Because this story is a lot more complicated than that, obviously. There's, there's a lot more pieces moving here than I think anyone has even really talked about. And, 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 and I, you can't get to it on the surface level. You're going to have to go deeper, which this amazing documentary team is doing, and it's amazing. Yeah, I, I will tell you that we came yesterday, and I told you yesterday, we were looking at a situation, we were told, um, by several sources, several sources, um, that we were looking at a situation where uh, this uh, Colony Ridge, um, w they were being sold, uh, being sold at usury style interest rates of 20 and 30 percent credit card rates that's that is what we were told um you were looking at uh, a situation where there were gangs involved the cartels were involved that is part of the story we're going to get today i'm doing several interviews uh on on that today but i will tell you if the authorities don't have if they're not willing to go on camera and say yes this is what i mean there was we, we um uh we're talking about a story yesterday where these two teenage kids were shot in the head um at a at the mailbox area they were both in their car and uh somebody went to the mailbox of of you know where all of the mailboxes are in this area and they uh, saw this car and these two guys they thought were just sleeping. These two teenage kids were just sleeping. They watch them. They come back and they see that they're still there. And they're like, hey, I, something's not right. So they went up to the window and they were going to knock on the window. And they look in and these two kids have been shot, I believe, in the head. Execution style, it seems. Well, now we're hearing that perhaps that didn't happen there that this was crime that was a body dump and there are places in houston there's one very famous place that is a body dump that's really bad but was this gang related and was it happening here there there is there's only one truth in the end but i'm and i'm, I'm really glad to say this we are doing everything we can to get to that truth. Not our truth, not the story we think people want to hear, but the actual story. Not sure, uh, I did several interviews yesterday and walked away believing parts of all of the interviews. Um, walked away liking some of the people, you know, not necessarily uh, loving some of the other people that we interviewed, but thought there was truth a little bit in everybody. And so our job now is just to piece this together because this is something that is going to happen all over the country. There is a lot of money being made here. And you wonder, I mean, we how long did we discuss this, Jason, that we're not sure if any of this is illegal might be immoral might be might not even be that strong might be something you're like i wouldn't do it i don't want my friends being involved in this um but is it immoral or is it illegal oh yeah constantly and i mean glenn you and i did a show i believe it was last week where we did where it was a wednesday night special 
and we picked out the top two issues that the country is most concerned about. Number one, the economy, people's finances, and number two, the border. Those and immigration, the top two issues. This story has elements of both on gigantic magnitude because if it's of a border issue, I mean, we've got an area that's huge. If, if people are getting um, mortgages when they don't need uh, social security numbers, when they don't even really need traditional mortgages, they're able to come here and no one's integrating. They're all living in this one little area. I kind of want to know if this is the standard going forward all over the country. Are these going to be popping up all over the place? Is that not the issue? I, I don't know. There's, we've been scouring social media, including Spanish social media, on the number one issue, the economy and financing. We're not exactly sure the ins and outs of, of, of how these deals are made, but it does look like people are confused. There are multiple people confused, as they were, you know, even during the 2008 financial crisis, people didn't really know what they were signing up for for some of those adjustable rate mortgages. I don't know if that's similar now, but we have got to get that story correctly because the stories that have come out right now, I do not believe have. But people need to know economically, financially, are you getting into a good deal here? And number two, the border. Is this making the border situation worse or is it not as connected as we've been led to believe it is the other thing is um i mean this is such a fascinating story because these are people um these are people that do not have a chance of getting a traditional loan okay seventy thousand. we were in the neighborhood and it's not a neighborhood i would want to live in there were parts of it that seemed pretty eerie and sketchy. Um, uh, but there are other parts of it that were pretty nice, pretty nice. And these are people that would not get a traditional loan. So they are going out and they're getting a loan. We're told today, we're still verifying everything. I told you yesterday, 20 to 30%. That's what we had found online and with some other sources. But it appears that maybe that is not true. We're going to have more... Um, when we, as we go, we have to lock these things in. The guy who's selling it told me yesterday it's 12.7. Well, 12.7 is very high for a, a house loan, but the United States, the federal, the federal reserve charged 19% at one point, you know, and if you don't have any credit at all and you don't have any money to put down, that's actually not a bad rate, quite honestly. Do you agree with that or disagree? Yeah, I, I, th I, think it, it's, I think it sounds like not a bad rate. But from what I'm seeing on, say, social media from people that have done this, I don't even know if they understand that. Because once they start getting into these uh, loans like a couple of years down the road, some of them are abandoning them, saying, oh, this is not worth it. Like, I don't think they were expecting to spend the amounts of money that they were. And that's just what it looks like from the confusion on there. Right. And so there's a difference, though, between them understanding it yeah. and predatory loans yeah. and uh, usury. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and, it, you know, you, you can look at this story. It's amazing. It's amazing. I wish you were. Well, you will be in January. I was going to say, I wish you were with me yesterday because I was so conflicted. I went back and forth, not on crime, not on any of that stuff, but I went back and forth on, is this, at first I was, it's probably illegal and it's absolutely immoral. And I still don't have an answer on either of those two. It might be illegal, it might be immoral, but I had a swing yesterday back and forth to these to where I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't know. This might be something good for somebody who can't start in America. What does that sound like? It sounds like every amazing documentary that you've ever watched. I just watched this documentary about aliens where they started out debunking them. Then in the middle of it, they kind of go back and forth and say, ah, maybe not. But at the end, you're like, wait a minute. Are aliens real? I mean, that's how I felt yesterday, not on aliens, but on this. I was like, it's exactly the same. It was back and forth, back and forth. This is an amazing story. It really is. Yeah, it's, uh, and it has huge ramifications at the very least, and the very least, and I don't even know if we're going to have time to cover this. Um, the thing I went to bed with last night was, is this the future of America? It is a, a community. It's enormous, about the size of Miami. 
Um, I was told by the developer 130,000 uh, to 150,000 residents when they're done. I heard close to a quarter of a million from other sources, but it's a lot of people. Um, right now, it's anywhere between 40 and 70, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a huge area, and it is in this small, little, sweet little town where um, there, nobody's rich there. I mean, there's trailers, you know, people living in trailers on their land there, but it's like my grandparents' farm when I was growing up. It was just this little, quiet, sleepy town, and all of a sudden, boom, right in the center of it are, you know, going to be 100,000-plus um, people that don't speak English, generally don't speak English. That is a shock to the community, and that doesn't necessarily make it uh, wrong. Or, you know, everybody is into not in my neighborhood, um, but it is shocking for that neighborhood and vastly changes it. And the problem is, just down the road a little bit, are these very nice, very, very nice, wealthy neighborhoods that if you didn't know you're coming into Houston and you're getting off the freeway and you're going to go buy a house, you'd see these places and you'd be like, this is great. But you'd have no idea that the slums, literally the slums, are right behind your house, right on the other side of the woods, right down the street. And that becomes a Brazil situation, which is is not good, is not good. So anything you were left with? Just said um, how on a lot of these stories, there's a lot more than meets the eye. And I mean, you're really not going to get into it if you operate like the mainstream media does at the, how they do it right now. Um, they take a story and they run a narrative and that's what gets pushed out to the entire country and you, and you never learn any, any further, you never go deeper. And that's what I really love about what we're doing now is we're going deep. And I can't tell you, like that documentary about aliens, how many times I'm going to be flip-flopped on this story by the end of it. I, I, I don't know at this point. We have, I believe, two or three interviews today. Um, tomorrow, we're interviewing another three or four, including something that goes late into the night. And then I think the day after that is another like four so, I mean, we are going both sides, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Where we end up, I have no idea, but it's going to be a whole lot of fun to do it and for the audience to watch it play out. Yeah, and it's, um, you know, the one thing that I took away from yesterday, and I mentioned this earlier, is it's very easy to be like the mainstream media. I went into this. Uh, we had all kinds of information. We have the information. We have the sources. But we don't necessarily have everybody on record. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see in the next few days who's willing to say, no, 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 say that to the camera. You know what I mean? Um, and and who, whose figures and stories stand up and whose stories don't. And we walked in yesterday, I walked in in the afternoon to an interview I thought absolutely just going to chop this up into little teeny bite-sized pieces and walked away saying, I'm not sure we have the story. Not, not saying that anybody is, uh, that I believe anybody right now. That's, I think that's the thing I walked away with. I walked in believing one thing. I walked out not believing anything. So that's what... And, you know, it's, we are grateful to uh, Blaze TV for spending all of this money. It's an, it's an incredible expense to do documentaries like this and investigations. It takes a whole team of people. My gosh, this documentary f uh, team is <laughs> unbelievable. I, I mean, honestly, uh, it's, they, they are remarkable at what they do. Uh, and you'll be able to see this on Blaze TV. Your support means the world. It's the only way that we can do this is if you go to blazetv.com slash Glenn, use the promo code Glenn Plus, and you'll save $30 off your annual subscription. This documentary, warts and all, and let the chips fall where they may. And I mean, 
there's one politician that we can't get a hold of, and we've offered to fly to him at any time. Nothing is stonewalling us, and that is Greg Abbott. And it says it says a lot that uh, his campaign received one point four million dollars. I mean, I know I pay ten percent of what I uh, what I make in tithing, so I know what I get from my church. I know what God has done for me lately. What is Greg? Got, what 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 is the person that gave Greg Abbott one point four million dollars? What are they getting out of this? The answer to me was, well, nothing. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it? 